Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is a T1 heavy tank. It's a tier 5 American heavy tank. It's located on the south spawn of Prokropka and it's under the command of Sly Meerkat. And alongside him is his longtime partner in battle, Omen Enraged. He's in the AMX ELC biz. Game on. Well, you can see two marks of excellence on the barrel of Slime Meerkat's gun. It's a 76mm, capable of 115 alpha, and penetrates fairly decently, actually, for... Oh, didn't mean to do that. It penetrates uh, up to 128mm with standard AP, and with the APCI it goes up to 177mm. So it's got decent pen, and it's also got a decent fire rate as well, because standard fire rate 3.45, Sly's got 2.74, so yes, you can get a lot of rounds off really quickly with this tank. And the same, it's the same 76mm gun that you find in the M4. Now, they made nine vehicles testing out the T1 Heavy. Uh, one experimental one, uh, which never saw action, and it was cancelled in 1942. They started it in May of 1940, but then they cancelled it in 1942 because they actually decided instead instead of going for a heavy tank they wanted to get uh, lots of medium tanks the m4 being the uh, precise one that they were going for this tank is a cast hull which is actually quite unusual at this particular time it's a big casting it's got heavy armor at the front of the vehicle fairly heavy at the front fairly weak on the sides and the rear so you don't want to over angle on this tank, but uh, if you can keep your front to the enemy, he's going to have difficulty trying to pen you because there's 101 millimeters of armor on the turret at the front and 95 millimeters on the front of the vehicle. There are some weak spots. We'll show those in the armor profile later on. You can see he's bouncing some rounds from a T67. Needs to watch out because the T67 has got a good penetration on his 76mm. Which is effectively the same one. And there's the M44 chiming in with one quick shot. Yeah, he is a fairly obvious target. Now he's not very fast, 35.4 kilometers an hour. And he doesn't reverse very fast either, it's only 10 kilometers an hour, but he does maneuver fairly well. It's a hydro-mechanical transmission system, an automatic gearbox, you could say, which makes life fairly easy for the driver. It's got a double-disc hydraulic um, motor. Oh, nearly hit uh, one of his own teammates there. In fact, actually... He did get his first kill, the AMX CLC. Now he's going for the VK. That's one. That's two. Both high rolls. That's three. Low roll. And the enemy's down. No, who's next? T3485. Trouble is, he keeps getting spotted by the guys over on the east side. Now he's being hit by the T67, and that was a pen. Albeit a low roll for the T67. He's over in that spotting bush, isn't he? Yeah, he's marking the ground where they are. Now, it does have a very large silhouette, this tank, which makes it fairly easy to hit. It also lacks accuracy at long range. It's got fairly big dispersion, and, well, as you saw, the, the gun is actually fairly low alpha. It's 115, but this was the gun that... At the start of the war, it didn't have much in the way of shell velocity. It's only got 792 meters per second. And he's got his second kill off the strip. So he couldn't do a lot of damage. Even though he could pen the enemy, these shells wouldn't do a huge amount of damage once they got inside. Later on during the war, the 76mm guns got much more da dangerous to the enemy because they were much higher velocity. And therefore, even once they penetrated, they actually did a lot more damage inside the enemy tank. He's being hit from the hill. There's a T1 heavy just across the railway line. And there's another one sitting on top of the hill shooting down on him. And yeah, he's had to turn to face the enemy to get his heavy armor in place. That T1 heavy is firing APCR in this direction. 
and the T1 Heavy gets taken out by our 25 TPs. Now facing a Valiant. He needs the APCR to get through that guy's armor because he's heavily armored at the front as well. He's having difficulty trying to pen us. We're penning him though. It's the fire rate on this thing. You need to maintain a very fast fire rate to get the best out of it. Okay, can he fire up at the hill? No, that T1 heavy is down in that dip. Now this tank, even though it's only got a very slow speed, is actually fairly good for ramming because it's got such a heavy weight. It's 61 and a half tons in mass. So if one of these comes barreling towards you at high speed, you are in trouble. You need to get out of the way. And oh, we just got hit by the Valiant again. And he lost his commander this time. And the commander has got a very big cupola. So for that guy to take him out, must have been aiming right to the top. And oh, that was the M44. Just hit us for 81. So he needs to change this position because if he stays here, just moving backwards and forwards, the M44 will get another shot into him. So he needs to move sideways a little, maybe over to that set of bushes to his left. Because if he stays here, the M44 will try again, possibly even with a blind shot. And there's the Valiant again. He did pen us this time, but it was only an HE round. And we lost the driver as well now. And now we've lost the gunner. There's two gunners on this tank, but he's had to use his repair kit and his first aid. So they're on cooldown, but he's got all his crew back in, and there goes the Valiant. Now watch out for that RT. Oh, here he comes again. Yeah, and this time round he did hit us, and a heavy one. And it looks like he hit us on the front of the tank, yeah, near the, uh, the driver's gunner's mate, actually, or... The driver's mate, I should say. It's the guy who operates the machine gun at the front. Those are where the weak spots are on those hatches. You can see where the other RT shell hit us. It was on the sides of the vehicle, the bogeys area. That's why it didn't do much damage to the last shot. Now, there's only four enemies left. That T-67, the T-52, T-3485, and the M-44. We know where the T-3485 is. Oh, that was a good shot. Long range shot, leading the target. He's hitting the rear of that tank. You show he knows how to use this gun, even with its uh, slow velocity over long range and the dispersion. So those were really good shots. Okay, he's come over this side to try and get that T67 or T20, VK2801's found the M44. Long range shots. Okay, got one in. Can we get another? He only needs one more shot to kill that guy. No, let it dial in. No, the dispersion was bad. Uh, but the M44 is down, taken out by the DSPZ. Just goes to show that dispersion is not that good. There's only two enemies left. They killed the T67. It's only the T3485M. We can just see he's not on the hill. He's actually below the hill on the flat round and the t52 we don't know oh and there goes the t3485m so now it's only that t52 and we can see that Sl sly has managed to get at least 20 percent of the enemy hit pool yeah one of our mods shows a little tick next to the high caliber symbol that lets you know you've hit 20 percent doesn't necessarily mean he's got the high caliber but he will have got 20 percent and it all depends on who else has reached 20 percent as well well, where's that T-52? Where did he go? He was in the lake area. No, nope, there he is. Just been found. Light. It's a light tank, so he's got light tank camo. And he's on the move, but he's we can't hit him from here. Oh, but the shot comes in from the M44. Takes him out of the game. And that is a victory for Sly Meerkat in his T-1 Heavy. Here's the end of battle stats, and we can see that that was the third mark game for Sly Meerkat in the T1 Heavy Tank. He managed to get a first-class tanker in the game, didn't get an ace, but got close to it. 
He also managed to get a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got six. A hand of God for surviving the battle, having received damage from four different enemies. A fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. And a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. And on top of all that, he did get a battle hero medal. He got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game overall. Let's have a look at the team score and see where he was. Well, we can see in this game, he actually did get the highest damage. He was the only player to get over 2,000 hit points as well. He got 2,145. The next highest scorer being the VK2801 with the 105mm. He got 1,401. So quite a competent player with that tank, which is difficult to play at long range. Uh, and then 1,284 hit points went to the T67 on his own team. I'm afraid Omen in Rage didn't last very long in battle. He got 260 hit points and got taken out before. Before he got any kills so we didn't see him die but yes he did die during that one when it came to kills it was shared between the m44 and slimy account because they both got three kills each two kills went to the bdr g1b and the dspz on his own team and two kills to the kv1 on the enemy team when it came to base XP, he's in a class of his own. He's at 1,134, the only player to break 1,000 hit points, uh, 5,000 XP points, I should say. 748 went to the T67, and 679 went to the Panhard AMD 178B. He fired 55 rounds in that game. You get 19 rounds of ammo, so you've got a fair amount of capacity, and that's why you can keep plinking away at the enemy to get the damage. 22 direct hits on the enemy, 20 penetrations, and 2,145 hit points of damage, of which 802 were at more than 300 meters. So, fair bit of long range shooting, more of it at close range, though. And as you saw with that, um, um, with the Striv M42 and uh, with the Valiant, yeah, he was plonk plonking those at close range. He managed to get 20 hits received, only four of which actually penetrated, nine non penetrations. And eight hits by way of splash damage. Yes, it wasn't just the M44 that was firing HE at him. So was the Valiant at the end because, of course, he just couldn't get through the armor. 1,250 hit points of damage blocked by armor. Two enemy vehicles spotted. Eight enemy vehicles damaged. Three killed. 778 hit points of spotting assist or damage assist. He earned 30,108 credits from the game. 22,581 from personal reserves, 13,549 from battle payments, a grand total of 85,808 credits. That's not bad for a tier 5 heavy. And then after repair, ammunition, resupply and consumables. And yes, he did fire some APCR during that game, some premium. He actually came away with 19,517 credits profit, 1,134 XP, base... 255 for playing the platoon and 1,956 experience points altogether. So the uh, T1 heavy tank, it's uh, kind of um, heavy on the armor on the front, as I said. Let's have a look at the armor profile for this one. Okay, as you can see, it's nice and red at the front, and that's because the armor is all basically up front on this vehicle. You've got impacted armor 95, actual effective armor 101. It's nicely rounded there. The upper plate is slightly better, 70 millimeters, but you're actually getting 146. Lower plate, don't aim for it because you've, it's only 44 millimeters, but look at the effective armor. It's very, very high because it's so well angled. You can get pens around about this area, Impacted armor is only 82.6, but you're actually getting effective armor of 93. And there's the viewport for the driver. It's an easy to pen there, and it's easy to pen here where there's a. It doesn't show the weakness there, but there is um, the driver's mate or gunner's mate because he's a machine gunnist uh, there. You can see the shoulders on the hull actually are fairly thin. 76.2 millimeters so you might be able to pen that area if you've got enough penetration with your standard rounds otherwise you're gonna have to use apcr the mantlet's quite strong 101 up there up front and you can see even on the sides because it's uh, so well angled if he's angling like this at you mostly with his front to you you're gonna have a tough time trying to get through that uh, turret armor there but it's a lot easier to penetrate the sides of this vehicle up front here it's only 52 millimeters back here it's only 43 
So yes, you can easily penetrate the sides of this vehicle if you sneak up on his side. If he angles at you slightly, it increases the effective armor. So ideally, you just want to get him in the sides or in the rear. And of course, the rear is very thin as well. 46 there, 82 there. So much easier to hit the sides of the vehicle. I'd aim for the rear if, if, if I was you. Just that area there, just above the engine. You'll find out why in a second. Let's have a look at modules. Okay. If we look at the modules, let's come out with that because it's really helpful if I show you the the guide okay you've got your driver up front there's where his port is there's the driver's mate or machine gunnist and he's got the radio right next door to him because technically he's the radio operator just behind those two on the left hand side we've got the main ammo rack so if you come up on the tank's left hand side you're looking at it now uh, then you can punch through the hull and get into his ammo rack and there's another ready rack just above that main ammo rack and that's where the loader is shoveling shells into the breach there's two gunners on this vehicle one for elevation the other for uh, ro rotation of the turret or azimuth and the tank commander you can see is actually in a very very th he's directly behind one of the gunners on the right hand side of the tank but he's got a very small capona so for that valiant to actually take out his commander that's a pretty good shot really uh, we can see the fuel tank is actually at the back, right in the centre. Uh, the fuel tank, the engine's in the back, um, as he, it normally would be. Transmission directly behind it. But this is why you should aim for the shoulders at the rear, because there's two big fuel tanks on either side. The arm is thin enough that your shells should be able to go through, and you should be able to get a fire. Even if he's angling like this at you to try and increase his armour, you should be able to puncture those fuel tanks at the rear and cause him some trouble. I wouldn't bother trying to uh, get at the Amorak from this frontal area from that position. You might be able to get it from that direction. Again, you have to aim directly below the back of the turret in the hull because that's uh, not in the actual turret itself because there's no Amorak in the turret as such, only the, the personnel. But if you can aim directly underneath the turret through the hull where it's weak, that might be able to get an Amorak or directly on this side beneath the uh, second roller. So there you go, that's where the modules are. So congratulations to Sly Meerkat on getting his third mark of excellence on the barrel. Not many people bother to get the third mark of excellence on the T1 heavy tank. Because it's so thin on the armour that uh, most people say, oh, well, I can't put up with this. I'm just going to keep going up the line uh, and get to the heavier um us tanks which are much much better to play uh, this one is just too difficult they much prefer the m6 which is the next tank up because it's got the 90 millimeter gun and that's where you're getting much more damage per shot this one with the 76 millimeter you just have to keep plinking away at the enemy as, as sly did if you're going to get as enough damage to actually uh, earn your marks but uh, congratulations on getting a mark because you don't see many three mark t1 heavy tanks about so well done if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and he likes his munchies. And of course, uh, do remember that we are giving all of the revenue from this channel to the Red Cross Ukraine appeal to aid the refugees coming out of Ukraine at the moment. And we will be doing that for the foreseeable future and publishing proof that the money has been sent. So uh, every video you watch is actually helping those refugees. Thanks for watching.